greatest cigars ever released. Well, by greatest, I don't mean the best tasting. Look, people always, this is what happens. I say things like that, and I don't mean that, and then people jump on it. I don't mean that. I mean to say they're the most prestigious line of cigars ever created. Among aficionados, among collectors, among people seeking old vintage Cuban cigars, the most famous line of Cuban cigars ever released. And what that is, is the Chateau series. The first Chateau series sold under the Hoyo de Monterey brand, named after where the cigars were named after, the great Bordeaux wines, the great wines of the Bordeaux region of France. The riff comes when talking about whose idea was it really. And I think the the big disagreement of when that came up, when it when it became such an issue, was after the Cubans started really hating Davidoff. Um, but there are different sides to this story. The Cubans after World War II were having a very hard time exporting their cigars, distributing their cigars, both because of the condition of the world and because popularity for the cigars was down. Um, they needed a new marketing strategy. They needed to make people want these cigars. So, as I said, two versions to the story. The Cuban version is that, due to this, they contacted Durr, a cigar distributor in Zurich, Switzerland, for lack of uh, better uh, explanation. They contacted Durr, and Durr came up with the idea of the Chateau series. It's a brilliant idea. It's a brilliant idea because it takes cigars and it puts them in a category with class and wealth and the good life. Davidoff, the good life. Because cigars weren't always viewed like that. There were times in the world where cigars were looked at as a low-class thing or a dirty thing. So that's one side of the story. Durr came up with the idea that Hoya de Monterey cigars be named after Great Bordeaux wines and sold by Davidoff. They were basically, basically what they say is that the cigars were distributed by Durr to Davidoff to be sold in Davidoff shops. So Davidoff was buying the cigars from him and then selling them for profit at his shop. Later on, Durr gave Davidoff full rights to the Chateau series. Davidoff completely disagrees with this assertion. He claims that the Chateau series was his idea and his alone, that he came up with the entire thing. Davidoff claims that the idea came to him whilst sitting in a French restaurant looking over the menu and looking at the French wine list and seeing these great Bordeaux wines and these great names, and it just struck him, like, why not name the cigars after these already known great wines to bring up their marketing value? This was a brilliant idea, and again, it sounds a lot like something Davidoff would do, as far as if you look at his present-day products, I mean, well, the company's present-day products and things thereafter. I, I guess, I guess, because... You know, we look back and we said he may have been the creator of the first desktop humidor. Obviously, he associated a lot of class with the way he presented his shop and everything there. Uh, so he was always known for, for bringing cigars into an upscale light. Um, so could it have been his idea alone? Quite possibly. Quite possibly. Uh, but even if it was, even if it was Davidoff's idea... I still believe the part where Zurich was distributing the cigars to him. Um, there was an interview, a very famous interview in Cigar Aficionado, uh, all about Davidoff. So it was about two years after Davidoff was discontinued and all about the collector value of Davidoff's and how everybody's going crazy for them, the connoisseur value of Davidoff's. And so during the interview, they phone 
a call to a gentleman who worked for Durr for many, many, many years. And he claims that the Cuban side of the story was closer to the truth. That Davidoff and Durr and a gentleman from England were all at the restaurant and they came up with the chateau idea together. But look, the argument is not so much... And then he said, goes on to say that the Chateau series was kept by Durr and distributed by Durr and sold to Davidoff to be sold in Davidoff shops. And then later, Durr gave Chate uh, Davidoff exclusive rights to the brand. That's not the part that, that's being argued about. That, I believe. The, the part that's being argued about is who came up with the actual idea. That's the thing. And this guy wasn't in the restaurant. So, you know, you have three guys sitting in a restaurant and he says, yeah, they came up with the Chateau idea, the series for the, the idea for the Chateau series together, but he doesn't know whose light bulb went off. Does it really matter? Does it really fucking matter? You know? But the funny thing is, is, was it Davidoff's idea? He, he is so insistent on it, but we're going to see several things that point to the possibility, tell me, that point to the possibility that I'm not so sure. But we will see that later. So just remember now, this is all before the actual Davidoff brand is created. This is after World War II. The Chateau line for the Hoyo de Monterey brand is created. It does the Cubans enormous good, brings their sales way back up. But then the revolution happens. 1960s, after the revolution, major, major changes. As you know, so many brands that were there are gone now. They have to rearrange everything, decide which brands they want to keep. Cigar sales are way down. Once again, they think of Davidoff. Now, so in 1969, Davidoff ends up at the El Aguido factory, where at this time, Cohiba is being born as a diplomatic gift cigar only, not a you know, standard production cigar for anybody. Uh, Trinidad is also being born. And we're not going to get so much into the whole thing with these three cigars. If you want the whole Cohiba conspiracy, check out the Cohiba Robusto episode because I think that's really cool. There is a lot that goes on here that I'm not going to talk about in this episode because there's a lot to cover about Davidoff. Basically, they gave Davidoff his own brand, Davidoff. Uh, at the El Aguido factory and you know Davidoff talks about tastings many different cigars and everything and it just so happens that he chooses chooses the blend and he chooses the first three sizes for his brand which is the Aguido number one the Aguido number two and the Ambassadries and these three sizes are all already Cohiba format cigars okay it's also said by former heads of the La Guido Factory, the El Guido Factory, that the Davidoff blend, the initial Davidoff blend for the number one, number two, Ambassadrice, which is a number three, was very similar to the Cohiba blend, but for using a lighter wrapper. Okay. Like I said, I'm not going to get into that whole thing. Watch the Cohiba Robusto episode and you'll know what I'm talking about. We just don't have time to get into the whole Davidoff is Cohiba fucking conspiracy concept. <laughs> but it's, it's fun. It's fun to think of things like that. Anyway, along with these three cigars, right then and after came the Chateau series. Davidoff's Chateau series. The first of which are released in 1969. The Aubryon, the Lafitte, the Latour, the Margot and the infamous Dikem, which would later cause Davidoff a lot of problems. So 1970 comes along. Davidoff is obviously doing very well because he sells his shop. He sells his shop to the Max Ottinger Company, later which would become the Davidoff Ottinger Group that owns Davidoff, and uh, for one million dollars, which back then, well, today, $1 million back then, would be equivalent to over $6 million. Very expensive shop. Um, but that didn't mean the cigars didn't keep coming. 
a lot of cigars were going to come out between then and by the end of Davidoff. Well, 1986 was when the last cigar was released, and then 91 was officially the, the last year Davidoffs uh, were to be sold in any uh, cigar shops, Cuban Davidoffs. But we will get to that. 1970, the Meal series comes along. Meal, M-I-L-L-E, meaning thousand, uh, and these cigars are simply, you know, the 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, available in slide lid boxes of 25 or 5 packs, just like they are today, only they're the Dominican cigars. Uh, and that was 1970. Oh. Not too much happening for a few years after the Mule series was released, but in 1977, one of the most famous Davidoff cigars ever was produced. The Don Perignon, named after the famous champagne produced by Moet and Chandon, also named the champagne named after the Benedictine monk of the same name. So that's an interesting kind of thing. The, the champagne is named after the monk, and then the cigar is named after the champagne. But um, this is a Churchill-sized Cuban Davidoff, and is most possibly the high, most highly sought after of the Chateau series today. Not the rarest, but it's a Churchill-sized cigar. It's Davidoff. It's named after the world's most famous champagne. People who know nothing about wine and champagne know Don Perignon. So, that's an incredible cigar. That's something you want to get your hands on. Any of these are. Any of these are. Um, connoisseur cigars, collector's cigars, you know, even for people who don't really smoke cigars, these are, you know, there are collectors out there that will buy these up regardless. Uh, people who collect everything, anything that's worth money, because these are worth big money. In 1983, an addition was made to the Chateau line, the Chateau Mouton Rothschild. Rothschild, Rothschild, there's a different pronunciation depending on whether you're talking about the Scottish or the French. This was named after a Bordeaux wine produced in France, so it's Rothschild. Now, being introduced later in 1983, and discontinued with all the rest in 1986 to 91, this makes it the rarest of the Chateau cigars. Very difficult to get your hands on this. Worth a lot of money. This is tasting much better. And in 1986, the final Davidoff cigar was released. The world famous Davidoff 80th anniversary. For his 80th birthday, it was a Grand Corona very, very big cigar, 48 by 8.7 inches, I believe, and I know it well, not that I own any, but because I could kill myself, it was one of the few Davidoffs still fairly widely available when I first started collecting, buying, smoking Cuban cigars. Not regular cigars, but Cuban cigars. And uh, they were expensive, but honestly, not that expensive when you look at how much they go for now. Uh, it was funny, when I first started collecting, smoking, you know, buying, whatever you want to call it, there was a lot of stuff available, and it wasn't very expensive compared to what it is now. Prices have gone way up. There were, you know, there were very few, only, I think like, you know, the, the first of the uh, edition limitadas were coming around, uh, you know, right after the Millennium Jars. It was funny because I had already been smoking cigars and it was it was the release of the Millennium Jars that caught my eye online and then started getting me really wondering about well how can I how can I get into this uh, so a lot of Davidoffs for not that much um, any of us would love to travel back in time but what is is so no use dwelling on it anyway after that 1991, and that was when everything changed, but there were several events leading up to 91 when um, Davidoff was finally officially discontinued. So let's look back a little bit and see 
what happened exactly. But before we do, let's talk about our second third. I'm getting down there. I'm going to remove the band now and um, give a little update on how our cigar is doing. So our second third is fairly good. Picks up flavor, some a lot of woody flavors, some cedar, but more like a note I'm going to say that's kind of like hickory or something like that. Um, very nice. A bit of a mossy tone to it. Smoke is a bit dry. Um, there's a little spice, not much. Uh, a, a very faint notes that I might call white pepper. It's a little peppery, but it's very faint. It's very subtle. I would say this cigar is refined. It's smooth, um, but not through the nose. It's it's a, it burns a bit through the nose, uh, very peppery through the nose. The aroma is very nice. The aroma is very woody, very floral. It's deep. It, it smells deep, and um, I like that. It's I wouldn't call it captivating, but it, it has a very nice essence to it. So the cigar is picking up. Spice is coming back a little now at the, at the beginning of the last third. We'll see where it goes. Uh, but I would say I enjoyed the second third a lot more than the first third. Cigar really kind of came into itself. It, it built up nicely. Um, there's almost a little bit of a little bit of a caramelization going on here where it's getting a little richer. Um, the finish seems long. The, the aftertaste, uh, it, 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 and it's very pleasant. It's, it's just a really good tobacco flavor. And that's where I'm finding that hickory type note left on the palate. It's a nice cigar. It's turning out to be a very nice cigar. But anyway, I don't want to run out of cigar. So I'm going to hasten that, move that along, and we're going to get right back to this Davidoff coming to an end, like I said. Well, it really started in 1984 where the first big thing happened. Chateau de Chem, very, very famous first growth wine, you know, big estate wine from France, from the Bordeaux region, like all these Chateau cigars were named after, files suit against Davidoff, saying that they stole the name, you know, that they're bandits, they made a big, big fuss about it, which got, at the time, it was Cuba tobacco, not Taba Cuba, um got Cuba tobacco thinking like, well, what's going on here? Didn't you have contracts? Don't we have contracts with these people? So they asked to see the contracts that Davidoff has with each of these estates that he has named the cigars after. He could not produce them. And in an interview later on, Davidoff claimed that there were no contracts. You know, basically here again, you know, we see that, you know, I wouldn't say he was lying, but maybe by omission, you know, he probably assumed that, that, you know, the Cubans would want to make sure that nobody's going to get sued, that they have contracts for these things, so they never asked, he never told, that kind of thing. Well, he didn't have contracts. In an interview, what he said he did basically was send each estate a box of the cigars saying, this is what we plan to do. Uh, you know, and he had gotten verbal agreement from it. Uh, he even said that the cigars were already in the market before he asked. And then he says, but that's beside the point. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? He, he says in the interview, the cigars were already in the market before I had sent the boxes and asked for the company's permission. But the cigars have, having already been in the market is beside the point. What do you mean it's beside the point? No, it's not. You didn't ask. You're using the, their names without asking. After that whole thing goes down, now there's tension between Cuba Tobacco and Davidoff. And there's also another problem. According to Davidoff, the quality of the cigars was diminishing, diminished, not up to his standards. And it's something that just kept happening and getting worse until the point where in... August of 1989, he publicly burned over 100,000 Cuban Davidoffs, well, to make a point. They weren't fit for sale in his shops. Well, of course, this just enraged 
Cuba tobacco enraged them. You know, I mean, it, it, there was a whole big thing. It, it was on the news. It was on TV. Um, not so much over here, of course, but definitely overseas. Um, they mentioned French news a lot. You know, and that was that. So the Cubans decided, well, you know what? We don't like them. We don't want to make them for you anymore. Again, the Cubans and Davidoff disagree on who left who. The Cubans say, well, he burned all those cigars, impossible to work with. We just had to cut him loose. Uh, he had no contracts with the companies. Davidoff says that it was his decision to leave. So in 1991, it became official that no more Cuban Davidoffs would be sold at Davidoff shops. But Davidoff knew this was coming. And as early as a year before, in 1990, he was already producing Davidoff cigars, or cigars under the Davidoff name, at a factory in the Dominican Republic. Say goodnight, Max. <laughs> <laughs>